Today is Thursday, uh, September, January something. Okay. This is our friend Jules. We're in our lobby. As you can see, there's a lot of activity. So part of our whole problem, we wave to the camera. This is Ashley, our top dog trainer here. There's our friend Caesar. So there's energy around here. So this is a, now this is our lobby. People come and go. So the biggest problem for Jules, not problem, all dogs, they need structure. We want to keep Jules' energy balanced. So that means she can't really bark at things. Uh, we're going to release her from her place. Okay. And she's going to come and she's just, she's probably going to go out. She want, we want to go out. So the trick here is always balancing her energy. So Ashley's going to go pick up her leash. Notice the leash and collar is always on. This is always a, somewhat of a psychological impediment for humans because they think it's a huge problem. Okay, come over here. And she's going to slow down. Ask him. Ask him to stay. Drop the leash. And whether she sits down or not. So the point is, one of her problems, I think, in life, she had these problems when her excitement level, her arousal level got up. How do we know when she's barking out the window? Her, 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 her. And then something enters into that sch schism. We're going to stay with it. Remember, this is 12 days. So we're going to put her down, ask her. Notice we're practically whispering. There's not a lot of talk. So she's got to get comfortable in all these different environments. And she's, uh, sorry, so we're going to cut. We're going to go outside. Notice I have my mat with me. This is going to be the place that she goes when we want her to go. It's the only place she's going to get food is on this beautiful little mat we bought her. And we're going to see if we can put this all together in the next three days. Uh, that will be the conclusion of our 12-day boot camp boarding school. And remember, it's only the beginning of a journey. We're setting some subtle behaviors in place. It's going to be up to uh, the, everybody to make sure this is solidified in the dog's brain. Right now, it's a lot of wishy-washy behaviors, but we got to put it together like a puzzle. Thank you. So we're giving her things to do with her mind, putting her to work. This, we just raised this, so we'll see how she's doing. You're going to set her up. We correct bad behavior physically and praise good behavior. Go ahead, heal. Up. Good. 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 Then bring it good. Bring it to the bed. So just picture this. It doesn't matter. We're just contained by the fence. So my vision of all this, wherever the mat is, the dog is. So if some stranger comes or you're not comfortable, the dog is excited, barking, we tell her to go to her place. The only time she gets off the mat now is when uh, she's given a command, and the command is a re what we call a release command. So, hey! Hey! So as long as, so I'm just sending distractions. Let's see. Um, so obviously she's not perfectly on the mat. We don't really care if she sits or stays. I understand she got up because she was nervous, right? So if an explosion occurs, we stand up and look, and we make it a, a, a calculation. Should we flee? What's going on? Uh, Ashley's going to ask him to down, her to down. There's a jet going on. The dog has to make a determination. They don't know what jets are. They don't understand how jets fly. This is a big bird. So the dog has to understand this. So release her. So the reason, a little talk, a lot of action. Dogs put together pictures because of the way the brain processes information. So this is her safe place. If this bed is in the living room, the bedroom, this is a safe place. She goes to it. And the only time she gets a morsel of food is when she goes on this place. Period. It's, so this is huge. I think she's doing amazing. We're going to spend the next few minutes more distractions. We're going up to the railroad station. So we're socializing her. Socializing her not to humans, but to, to our, our, our environment. What a good girl. All right, here we are at the Ronkonkoma Railroad Station. This uh, agility course we have is built by the MTA, courtesy of the Mass Transit Authority. And we use it because it is uh, really, we don't need to go buy an agility course. We have steps, we keep going. And in this way, we get Jules to understand what trains are. You know, we can't explain in human what a train is and then go down the platform, or I should say the ramp. And she's on the left. Notice that Ashley is relaxed. If she gets tense, the dog gets tense. So it's really kind of a funny thing. Now what do we hear? We hear a PA system. What is that to a dog? It's like the spirits of the gods calling us. So we're going to cut and move into the energy of the train station. This is, this is huge for 
for a buzz. Distractors, the hissing noise of air brakes, these are big distractors for dogs. So it's great that she's doing fine, she's laying down, her mouth is open and breathing. So we have this, this epicenter, this could be New York City. We, we use the environment to teach the dog. And then we enforce rules. Uh, Ashley's stepping out with her left foot, and the dog's going. She can go fast, go fast, the dog goes fast. She goes at a normal pace, the dog goes normal. That's normal. Uh, then you're gonna slow down. The dog should SIT. By doing that, by subordinating to Ashley, she doesn't have to worry about the hissing bus. Because it's not a bus to her, it's a creature. The train is going to be a pterodactyl, an aluminum pterodactyl. It has to be adjusted to her energy. She can't bark at things. If she's stepping out with her left, and it's freezing out here. But this is what we have to do. All right, we're moving forward. We're at the epicenter. As I said, there are so much things going on here that is so human, that requires our human brain to understand. And it leaves a dog at a very distinct disadvantage. Just this metal grate affects the dog's perception. If they can see through, they don't understand it. It's a different temperature. It might be colder, it might be warmer. The, the pet. We have people coming and going. So this is an amazing thing. There are birds. There's a lot of people coming. So what we're going to do is cut. And we're going to okay, so we're moving forward. This is advanced training. We, we take for granted, it's called in inattentional blindness. There's a flag up there. The dog hears metal clanking. Uh, there's energy, there's people, there's taxis. We're in the middle of it. We're using, again, the MTA provided this beautiful agility course that we don't have to pay for. So Ashley's just going to uh, call her. Jules, okay. Good. And now, two minutes ago, she was very apprehensive about jumping. She's healing away. Come back. And then face her. We're going to use the bed and the jumps all at once. Go ahead. Go, go, go. Go, please. Go, please. Don't put tension. Go, please. please. All right. She's a little confused. She's a little confused. She gets a treat. All, the only times there's food reward involved in our training is when a dog does something, goes to its place. We don't give food for sitting, staying. So this has been a wonderful experience. Uh, I don't know if you can pan around and see. We are not in a sterile area. Come with me here. So, if this is, uh, there's pigeons. It's pigeons. I don't know if you see pigeons much. Look at the, the, the flagpole. That's huge a distraction for a dog. Now you're gonna just get low and call her. Jules. Okay, come. Notice there's only has to be a leash and collar. Always. We're cutting and we're going back to warm. So here we are, we're utilizing our mat because it's a definite place. And trust me when I tell you, there's people coming and going. We always have a long leash on for now because we're in the teaching phase. This is only 10 days. This is only 10 days of our program and we're going to inject, we have the ability to inject things. So we're not ready to go to Grand Central Station today where people are going to step on our paws or our tail. But we're teaching how to be tolerant of certain things. So her mind, whether she's out on a field, whether she's wherever she is, and if you can stand, come over this way. And there's people coming and going. There's energy. All right. I think that person wanted for a bank robber. Go get him, Jules. No. Uh, so there's energy that we're balancing out. I can do stuff, and I can say high five, and we can do stuff, and we can wave, and Jules stays. I have a long line on. I don't have to worry. See if you can work your way over this way, photographer, so we can see what the dog sees. So this journey begins. Now, if somebody comes running up to Jules, a child, or somebody with a big basket, the dog is at, at a disadvantage because it's spatial. If I go running up to the camera, this is a spatial problem we're dealing with. So all I want my friend Ashley to do is get low, call the dog. I'll pick up the mat for now. Let's cut. That other person up the ramp. You can't move. You can't lose you yet. Go right up the ramp. Keep going. Tell him he's a good boy. Out of here. 
Good. Perfect. 